community has ever been hit by disaster, if a friend has ever needed blood, if you know how to swim, if you know how to save a life, then you know the Red Cross. The Red Cross is the organization you trust. Today, you'll gain life-saving skills that will help you prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies. You and the American Red Cross. Together, we'll be there. Accidents and medical emergencies happen. They can happen at any time, in any place. Are you prepared? There's always a chance that something can go wrong. You never know what's going to happen. People can fall and break bones. You have sudden illnesses. You can have cardiac arrest. I was calm because I knew first day. I knew what to look for and what to watch for. I feel much better about knowing that I have that potential to help someone. Knowing and using first aid means you can make a difference. Someone came up to me and said, Dan, they need you. When I came around the corner, I saw a pair of feet sticking out of an aisle. She got a cut across her hand from the serrated edge. And that's when he said he splashed a chemical on him. But he was laying on a concrete floor in a cold room just above freezing. And we knew enough that the burning kept happening and we needed to get her additional help. We went through bandaging, controlling bleeding. We decided to move him outside of the room due to the cold environment. If I wasn't there, I believe he would have just shut the water off and went back about his business. The people that responded had been trained in basic first aid. If I hadn't been there, I don't know what they would have done. And the lady came upon the scene. In this course, Check. you will learn what to do when there is a medical emergency. Took the man out completely out of the room. I believe it's important to have companies trained in first aid, all kinds of companies, because you never know what's going to happen. Before, I would probably stay out of the way, and now I'm more likely to step in and ask if I can help. It's not molecular biology. It's like most other things. If you pay attention to class, it's not difficult. We covered just about any situation from cuts, burns, CPR, use of splints, bandaging techniques. I feel very comfortable with the training that I have received through the Red Cross. When something happens, yes, my heart races, but I know that I've been properly prepared and I can handle that situation. With training, you'll know what to do. You won't be afraid to do it. And most importantly, you won't go in and do it wrong. It feels great to help someone, just knowing that they're better because of what you've done. American Red Cross Workplace Training. Standard first aid. The skills you learn could save a life. Directory looks good as well. Very good. Things are looking good. Very sharp. Listen, I'm going to take one of these back to the team. You stay here and wait for the project to be finished. Giving me the hard part, huh? Hey, Carl, are there any problems in this? Oh, yeah. We made a few special. Just for you, Charlie. Ah, uh, you always do that, Carl. Love that special attention. I gotta go. Wait, we don't know if it's safe. 
In an emergency, you can make a difference. The American Red Cross recommends you use the emergency action steps, check, call, care. You need a first aid kit. Where is it? Okay. Wow, that was quick. One minute we're talking and the next... Carl, can you hear me? Are you okay? What do we do? Call 911. We need an ambulance. Right. Watch the scene again to see how the rescuer uses the emergency action steps. First aid, Red Cross first aid, check, call, care. Check, call, care will guide your actions so that you may help in the most effective way. Begin by checking the scene to make sure that it is safe for you, the victim, and any bystanders. Take in the whole picture. Wait, we don't know if it's safe. Check for clues about what caused the emergency how many victims there may be, and if any bystanders can help. I'll get that electrical line. It's off. It looks okay. Go turn off the machine. Okay. Top. Pick up that can. Sometimes a scene may be unsafe. Examples include spilled chemicals, escaping poisonous gas, steam, smoke, or fire, downed electrical lines, confined spaces, traffic. If these or other dangers exist, do not go near the victim. Stay at a safe distance and call 911 or the workplace emergency number for help. Leave dangerous situations to professionals. If it is safe to approach, check the victim. We need a first aid kit. Where is it? I'll get it. Wow, that was quick. One minute we're talking and the next... He doesn't look good, does he? No, he doesn't. Once you have checked the scene and determined it is safe, Check the victim for life-threatening conditions. Carl, can you hear me? Are you okay? What do we do? After checking the scene and the victim, it is important to get help quickly. Call or have someone call 911 or the workplace emergency number. Call 911. We need an ambulance. Use the phone on the desk. Right. Tell them he's unconscious. It happened without warning, and they're going to need to know our address and location. Right. He's unconscious and he collapsed suddenly. We're at 204 Washington Avenue, right? Right. The cross street is Pratt. I can't tell if he's breathing. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, a man is unconscious and he just collapsed suddenly. When calling, five, five, give five, the dispatcher eight, seven, all of the necessary information. Give right. the telephone number, Avenue, the exact Pratt. location of the emergency, the caller's name, what happened, the number and condition of the victims, and what help is being given. Some dispatchers may be able to tell you how best to care for the victim. Don't hang up until the dispatcher hangs up first. Thank you. They're on their way. Okay, I'm going to go outside and wait for help. Okay. In an emergency, 
first check the scene to ensure your safety and the safety of the victims and any bystanders. Look around the scene for clues about what caused the emergency. Follow the emergency action steps. Check, call, care. Everything's gonna be all right. Let's okay. get some help. Go call okay. 911. Get the first aid kit. Are you okay? Kind of. My arm really hurts, though. When there is more than one victim, you need to prioritize care. Determine who needs help first. Quickly check each victim for life-threatening conditions that include unconsciousness, no breathing, no pulse, or severe bleeding. Okay, sit down, relax. I gotta go check him. Oh, man. Yeah. Tomas, I'm trained in first aid. I'm here to help you, okay? Yeah, sure. Oh, man. Here's the first aid kit. Thanks. Can I help? Go check on her, just in case. Sure. So, Moss, what happened? I, I don't know. The great box started falling. Continue to look for conditions that may become life-threatening when checking a conscious victim. Do you feel any pain anywhere? Yeah, yeah, my leg. Do your legs hurt? Uh, yeah, right there. Okay. Don't try to move. Uh, Keep the victim still. Do not move uh, the victim. Uh, then check the victim yeah. from head to toe. Look at coloring of victim's face and lips. Check skin appearance. As you check, note anything unusual, including bleeding, cuts, bruises, bumps, depressions, or pain. Watch for changes in consciousness and breathing. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I don't know. Is Tomas okay? He's being taken care of. When you look over the victim, Watch for signs of pain and listen for indications of pain. Do you have any pain in you? Yeah, in my arm. Well, don't move it. Okay. No bleeding. Look for odd bumps or depressions. Cutting, but your arm hurts, huh? Oh, yeah, real bad. Is there anything I can do to make you more Make sure someone has called 911 or your workplace emergency number. The ambulance is coming. Don't call. Good. Don't move your legs. Thomas, do you feel any numbness, any loss of sensation? Ask the victim these questions. Do you feel pain anywhere? Do you feel numbness or loss of sensation? Do you have any allergies? Do you have any medical conditions or are you taking any medications? When did you last eat or drink anything? When caring for a victim, care to minimize the effects of shock. Shock is a life-threatening condition and can occur with conscious and unconscious victims. Where am I? Control any external bleeding and everything's continue right. to monitor the victim. Sue, can you help me elevate his leg, please? Sure. Elevate the legs about 12 inches, only if head, neck, back, or leg injuries are not suspected. Okay, great. Sue, so do me a favor and go get a blanket, all right? Sure. Loosen restrictive clothing. Okay, just go ahead and help me spread it out. Keep the victim from getting chilled or overheated. All right. And do me a favor and go wait for the ambulance, all right? Okay. okay. Tomas, Tomas, can you still hear me? Yeah. Do not give the victim food or drink and reassure him until advanced medical personnel arrive. Thomas, buddy, what day is it? Uh, Tuesday. That's good. Just, just relax. Everything's gonna be all right. Help is on its way. If a person appears to be choking and is coughing forcefully, encourage him to keep coughing. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Someone call 911. He's choking. Can I help you? I know what to do. If a victim can no longer speak, cough, or breathe, give abdominal thrusts to clear the airway. Stand behind the victim and position your hands. Find the belly button. Make a fist with your other hand and place the thumb side of your fist against the middle of the victim's abdomen, just above the belly button. Grab your fist with your other hand and give quick, upward thrusts. 
Each thrust should be a separate attempt to force the object out. Continue thrusts until the object is coughed up, the victim starts to breathe or cough forcefully on his own, or until the victim becomes unconscious. <coughs> to review, if a conscious victim is choking, give abdominal thrusts. Have someone call 911 or the workplace emergency number. Stand behind the person. Place the thumb side of your fist just above the belly button. Grab your fist with your other hand. Give quick upward thrusts into the abdomen. Continue thrusts until the object is forced out, until the victim can breathe or cough forcefully on his own, or until the victim becomes unconscious. When a victim appears to be unconscious, check the scene for safety. Then, okay? check the victim for life-threatening conditions. Bob, to check if a victim right? is unconscious, gently tap and shout okay? to see if he responds. Can you hear me? If the victim does not respond, call 911 or the local emergency number or have someone else call. This is Mary Cole on the fourth floor. I've got an unconscious co-worker. We need an ambulance here right away. Room 406, right turn around the elevator. I'm at extension 4100. Okay, I'm calling 911 and an AED is on the way. Fourth floor, right? Yes, the fourth floor. Check for breathing. Position yourself so that your face is close to the victim's mouth and nose. Look, listen, and feel for breathing for about five seconds. If the victim is not breathing, or you can't tell, roll him onto his back. Place one hand at the back of the neck and the other hand on the hip. Support the head and neck while gently rolling the victim towards you. Keep the head and back in a straight line. Tilt the head back and lift the chin. This opens the victim's airway. The airway is the path that air travels to get from the nose and mouth to the lungs. When an unconscious victim is on his back, the tongue relaxes and falls back into the throat, blocking the airway. Tilting the head back and lifting the chin pulls the tongue away from the back of the throat and opens the airway. Put your ear close to the victim's mouth and nose. Look, listen, and feel for breathing. Look to see if the chest rises and falls while you listen and feel for breathing for about five seconds. If you find that the victim is breathing but is unconscious and has no evidence of head, neck, or spine injury, place her in the recovery position. To place the victim to her side, lift the arm on the side the victim will be rolled to above her head. Take the other arm and cross it over the chest. Bend the top leg. Kneel between the shoulders and the hips. Gently roll the victim as a unit in that position. Support the head so that it is angled toward the ground. If the victim is still not breathing, look into the mouth for any obstructions. If you don't see anything, place a breathing barrier over the victim's mouth. Open the airway and pinch the nose shut. Give two rescue breaths. Watch the victim's chest clearly rise and fall each time you give a breath. If a breathing barrier is not available, you may choose to give breaths without one. Next, check for signs of circulation. To check for signs of circulation, look, listen, and feel for normal breathing. Watch for coughing or movement in response to rescue breaths and check for a pulse. To find a pulse, using two fingers, find the Adam's apple. Slide your fingers toward you and down into the groove at the side of the neck. Check for signs of circulation for no more than 10 seconds. The care you provide will depend on the conditions you find. If the victim vomits, 
remove any breathing barriers and roll the victim onto his side. Using your index finger, sweep out the mouth. To review, when checking a victim who appears to be unconscious, follow these steps. Check the Are scene okay? for safety. Then check the victim. Bob. Gently tap right? and shout to see if the victim responds. Are you okay? If the victim does not respond, call 911 or the local emergency number, or floor. have someone else call. Check for breathing. Position yourself so that your face is close to the victim's mouth and nose. Look, listen, and feel for breathing for about five seconds. If the victim is not breathing, or you can't tell, roll him on his back. Support the head and neck while keeping the body in a straight line. Tilt the head back and lift the chin. This opens the airway. Next, look, listen, and feel for breathing for about five seconds. If the victim is not breathing, look in the mouth for any obstructions. If you don't see anything, put a breathing barrier over the victim's mouth and give two rescue breaths. If a breathing barrier is not available, you may choose to give breaths without one. Next, check for signs of circulation for no more than 10 seconds. The care you give will depend on the conditions you find. When you check an unconscious victim and find that your two initial breaths go in, Next, check for signs of circulation for no more than 10 seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand, seven one thousand, eight one thousand, nine one thousand, ten. If the victim has a pulse but is still not breathing, begin rescue breathing. Open the airway by tilting the head back and lifting the chin. Pinch the nose shut, take a breath, and breathe into the victim. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Give one rescue breath about every five seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, Each breath four, should last about two seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Watch the chest four, clearly rise and fall with each breath. Avoid one breathing thousand, in too thousand, hard or too long thousand, four, because the thousand, air could go into the stomach instead of the lungs. One, if the victim thousand, vomits, two, one thousand, roll three, the victim thousand, on his four, or her thousand. side and sweep out the mouth. After one, one minute thousand, of rescue thousand, breathing, three, about thousand, 12 breaths, recheck for breathing and other signs of circulation. Remove the breathing barrier. Look, listen, and feel for normal breathing. Watch for coughing or movement in response to rescue breaths and check for a pulse for no more than 10 seconds. If the victim has a pulse but is still not breathing, replace the breathing barrier and continue rescue breathing. One rescue breath about every five seconds. Continue rescue breathing until the scene becomes unsafe. The victim begins to breathe on his or her own. You are too exhausted to continue or another trained responder arrives and takes over. Recheck for breathing and signs of circulation about every minute. Care for the conditions you find. If at any time you suspect a head, neck, or back injury, you can perform a jaw thrust maneuver. Rest your elbows on the surface on which the victim is lying. Place one hand on each side of the victim's head. Place your thumbs on the victim's cheek and your fingers under the back of the lower jaw, next to the ears. Grab the back of the lower jaw and lift with both hands. If the lips close, you can open the mouth with your thumb by pushing back the lower lip. If mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing is necessary while maintaining the jaw thrust, close the victim's nostrils by placing your cheek tightly against them. Give two rescue breaths. <sighs> to
YouTube review. When you check an unconscious victim and find that your two rescue breaths go in, check for signs of circulation for no more than 10 seconds. If the victim has a pulse but is still not breathing, begin rescue breathing. Open the airway by tilting the head back and lifting the chin. Pinch the nose shut and breathe into the victim. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Watch the chest clearly rise and fall with each breath. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Give one breath about every five seconds. After one minute or about 12 breaths, recheck for breathing and other signs of circulation. Continue rescue breathing until the scene becomes unsafe, the victim begins breathing on his or her own, you are too exhausted to continue, or another trained responder arrives and takes over. What's for breakfast? I don't know. Is that going to be a lunch? Yeah, I'm going to fix it, though. All right. Well, let me fix you some pancakes or sausage or bacon. you got to eat honey. No, I really don't want anything. Thank you, dear. What's the matter? Oh, it's heartburn. You don't look so good. Are going to be okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll be all right. Hey, Ed, how are you? Oh, I could be better. Oh, come on, the week's half over. Yeah. Come on, Ed, cheer up. See you later. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Whoa, you don't look so good. You feeling all right? Oh, I've been feeling bad all morning. I'm gonna have to go sit down. Hey, just take oh. it easy, all right? I mean, right. the shimmy will go out when it goes out. Let those guys wait. That's right. I, I'm gonna have to take it easy the rest Ed of the day. Smith, report immediately to loading bay B. Oh, uh, this can't wait. I'll see you later, friend. Ed hey, just Smith, take it easy, all right? Okay, thank to you. Loading bay B. When someone needs help in an emergency, always check the scene to be sure it's safe. Ed, are you all right? Ed, are you okay? Tammy, you better call 911. He's unconscious. Okay. Let me get the first aid kit. And bring the AED. Okay. In a cardiac emergency, every second counts. Follow the four links in the cardiac chain of survival. Early recognition and access to the emergency system, early CPR, early defibrillation, and early advanced life support. What's going on? It collapsed and looks really bad. I'm calling 911. 
911, what's your emergency? It's my coworker, Ed. He's unconscious. Would you send someone right away, please? The first link in the cardiac chain of survival is early recognition and access. Recognizing an emergency exists and calling 911 or the local emergency number activates the EMS system. He's not breathing. Tell Tammy he's not breathing and there's no pulse. Right, not breathing and no pulse. I'm going to start CPR. Got it. Early CPR is the second link in the cardiac chain of survival. CPR keeps blood containing oxygen flowing through the body, helping sustain vital organs. Performing prompt CPR can delay the onset of brain damage and death. Stop CPR and check and see if he has a pulse. He hasn't got a pulse. Apply pad. Plug in connector. Apply pad. Plug in connector. Early defibrillation is the third link in the cardiac chain of survival. Automated external defibrillators, AEDs, analyze the heart's rhythm and, if necessary, prompt the responder to deliver an electrical shock to the heart. This shock, called defibrillation, attempts to re-establish a normal heart rhythm. Each minute defibrillation is delayed reduces the victim's chance of survival by about 10%. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Okay, analyze and everybody stay clear. Shock advised. Charging. Okay, shock advised. Everybody stay clear. Deliver shock now. Okay, shock advised. Stay clear. Shock delivered. Analyzing heart rhythm. Rapid response is the key to saving lives in medical emergencies. If a workplace trained responder with an AED can provide care before the arrival of advanced life support, the victim has a better chance of survival. Paramedics can give early advanced life support, the fourth link in the cardiac chain of survival. In a cardiac emergency, when every second counts, Following the links of the cardiac chain of survival can mean the difference between life and death. If you check an unconscious victim and find no signs of circulation and an AED is not readily available, Begin CPR. Locate the correct hand position for chest compressions by finding the notch at the lower edge of the victim's rib cage by using the hand closest to the feet. Slide your middle and index finger up the edge of the rib cage to the notch where the ribs meet the breastbone. Place your middle finger on this notch and the index finger next to the middle one. Place the heel of your other hand on the breastbone next to your index finger. Place the hand you use to locate the notch on top. Position your shoulders over your hands with your elbows locked. Compress the victim's chest straight One, down 15 two, three, times four, five, to a depth six, of about seven, two inches eight, nine, and at a rate of about 100 compressions per minute. Follow the compressions with two rescue breaths. Watch for the chest to clearly rise and fall. Continue 15 compressions followed by two rescue breaths. Each breath should last about two seconds. One, two, 
three, Fifteen four, compressions five, should six, take about seven, ten seconds. Eight, nine, ten, Counting nine, out loud 12, will help you 13, to maintain 14, an even 15. pace and rhythm. Keep the down and up motion of each compression smooth, One, pushing two, with the three, weight of your upper body, five, not six, with your seven, arms. Eight, nine, By compressing ten, the heart 12, between the 13, breastbone 13, and spine, you force blood containing oxygen to vital organs throughout the body. After one minute of compressions and breaths, about four cycles, recheck for signs four of circulation thousand, thousand, for no more than ten four, seconds. Five, one, six, one, if there are no signs of circulation, continue cycles of 15 compressions and two breaths. Once you start CPR, continue until the scene becomes unsafe. You can feel a pulse, and AED becomes readily available. You are too exhausted to continue, or another trained responder arrives and takes over. Recheck for signs of circulation every few minutes to determine any changes in the victim's condition. One, two, three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten, and eleven, and twelve, and thirteen, and fourteen, and fifteen. To review, if a victim has no signs of circulation and an AED is not readily available, begin CPR. Find the proper hand position. Give fifteen One, chest and compressions. Two, three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, and nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Give two rescue breaths. Give three more cycles of 15 compressions and two rescue breaths. This should take about one minute. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. After the first minute, recheck for signs of circulation for no more than 10 seconds. If the victim does not have signs of circulation, continue CPR. Recheck the pulse every few minutes to determine any changes in the victim's condition. Continue CPR until the scene becomes unsafe, you find signs of circulation, an AED becomes readily available, you were too exhausted to continue, or another trained responder arrives and takes over. One, two, three, and four. If at any time during your care, the two rescue breaths do not go in, you might not have tilted the head back far enough. Reposition the airway by tilting the head farther back. Pinch the nose shut and give two breaths again. If your breath still won't go in, assume the airway is blocked. Remove any breathing barriers. Give 15 chest compressions. Locate the correct hand position for chest compressions by finding the notch at the lower edge of the victim's ribcage by using the hand closest to the victim's feet. Slide your middle and index fingers up the edge of the rib cage to the notch where the ribs meet the breastbone. Place your middle finger on this notch and the index finger next to the middle one. Place the heel of your other hand on the breastbone next to your index finger. Place the hand you use to locate the notch on top. Position your shoulders over your hands with your elbows locked. Compress the victim's chest straight down 15 times to a depth of about 2 inches and at a rate of about 100 compressions per minute. Look for a foreign object. Open the victim's mouth by grasping the tongue and lower jaw between your thumb and fingers and lifting upward. Look inside the victim's mouth for a foreign object. If you see something, remove it by sweeping it out with a finger. Replace the breathing barrier and give two rescue breaths. If your breaths do not go in, continue cycles of 15 chest compressions, foreign body check and removal, 
and two rescue breaths until the object is removed and the chest clearly rises with rescue breaths, the victim starts breathing on his or her own, or EMS personnel arrive and take over. To review, if your breaths do not go in, reposition the airway by tilting the head further back and give two rescue breaths again. If the breaths still do not go in, assume that the victim's airway is blocked. Locate the correct hand position. Give 15 compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and thirteen, and fourteen, and fifteen. Look for a foreign object. If you see the object, lift the jaw and tongue and remove the object with your finger. Give two rescue breaths. If the breaths go in, check for signs of circulation. If there are no signs of circulation, continue with compressions and breaths. Before using an AED, confirm the absence of a pulse. Check signs of circulation, which includes a pulse, for no more than 10 seconds. If there are no signs of circulation, prepare the AED for use. Remove the pads from their packaging and apply them to the victim's bare, dry chest. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Place one pad on the victim's upper right chest and the other pad on the victim's lower left side. Stand clear and make sure not to move or touch the victim. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Then, let the AED analyze the rhythm. The AED will indicate shock advised shock if advised. a shock is needed. Charging. Stay clear of patients. Make sure no one is touching deliver the victim and deliver the shock Press when prompted. The orange button now. Shock delivered. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. Shock delivered. If the AED Analyzing indicates that a shock is not necessary, not touch the this means that it does not detect a shockable rhythm. No shock advised. Recheck the it victim's pulse for no more than 10 seconds. Check pulse. If there is still no pulse, perform CPR for one minute. Then, let the AED reanalyze the rhythm. Make sure you are clear. If prompted, deliver another shock. If no shock is advised, check the pulse. Care for the conditions you find. To review, to use an AED, confirm the absence of a pulse. Check signs of circulation for no more than 10 seconds. Turn on the AED and prepare it for use. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Stand clear and let the AED analyze the rhythm. And if shock is indicated, deliver a shock. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. Press the orange button now. Shock delivered. If no shock is indicated, recheck the victim's pulse for no more than 10 seconds. If there is no pulse, perform CPR for one minute. Then stand clear and let the AED reanalyze the rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Care for the conditions you find.
one and two and three and four If and an AED five and becomes six, readily seven, available with eight, CPR nine, in progress, ten, stop nine, CPR and confirm and the absence of a pulse. Check the pulse. Check the pulse for no more than 10 seconds. One, thousand, two, if there is no pulse, three, seven, prepare the AED for use. No pulse. Turn on the Apply AED. The patient's bare chest. Remove the pads from their pads packaging connector. and apply them to the victim's bare, dry chest. Place one pad on the victim's upper right chest and the other pad on the victim's lower left side. Plug-in connector. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing stand clear. Stand clear and make sure not to move or touch the victim. Then, let the AED analyze the rhythm. Shock advised. Make sure Charging. no one is touching the victim and deliver patient. the shock when prompted. Shock advised, stand clear. Press the orange button now. Shock delivered. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing, stand clear. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Shock advised. Stand clear. Shock delivered. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing. Stand clear. No shock advised. It is safe to touch the patient. Check pulse. Check In pulse. some cases, the AED will indicate that a shock is not necessary. One, 1, 000, this two, means 1, that the AED 3, 1, does not detect 4, 1, 000, a shockable five. rhythm. In no this pulse. case, Beginning recheck CPR. the victim's pulse for no more than 10 seconds. One and two if and there three, is still no pulse, five, continue six, CPR seven, for one minute. Eight, nine, then, ten, let nine, the AED reanalyze the rhythm. Make sure everyone is clear. Care for the conditions you find. To review, to use an AED, confirm the absence of a pulse. Turn on the AED and prepare it for use. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Let the AED analyze the rhythm, and if a shock is indicated, shock advised, stand clear. Deliver the shock. Press the orange button now. Shock delivered. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, If a shock three, is one not thousand, indicated, four, one thousand, recheck five. the pulse. If no there pulse, is no pulse, CPR. continue CPR for one minute. Then, let the one, AED reanalyze the rhythm. And five, and six, Make sure and seven, everyone is clear. And nine, and ten, Care for the conditions and 12, you find. And 13, and 14 and 15. When someone becomes suddenly ill, you may not know exactly what is wrong, but by recognizing the signals of sudden illness and acting quickly, you can save a life. Sudden illnesses include stroke, seizure, oh, I'm a diabetic. diabetic emergency, and poisoning and allergic reactions. Yeah, 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 oh, okay. Victims of sudden illness can exhibit a wide range of signals. The most common initial signal of sudden illness is a change in mental status, such as confusion, dizziness, or disorientation. It's the data you wanted, George. George, are you okay? Even if you cannot identify the specific sudden illness, follow the emergency action steps. First, check the scene. Can you hear me? Then, check the victim. If a person is having a seizure, the body may stiffen and then convulse. Another signal could be labored or no breathing. 
George is sick. He may be having a seizure. Call 911 and then call security. 911? Yes, uh, this is Lily Hanks at PGNR. Cushion the victim's five, head five, using five, folded six, clothing two, to make six, a small two. pillow. Do not hold or restrain the victim or place anything between the victim's teeth. Remove any nearby objects that might cause injury. He appears to have had a seizure. He's lying beside his desk. Take basic precautions to prevent disease transmission, including putting on disposable gloves whenever possible. Help is on the way. Okay. You're gonna be okay, George. Just hang in there, buddy. Lucille, are you all right? Oh, I'm a diabetic. In a diabetic emergency, a victim may demonstrate Purse. signals such as dizziness, Purse. disorientation, or fainting. The person may have trouble breathing. Have her rest in a comfortable position. Help the victim with any medication. If a victim has been poisoned or is having an allergic reaction, signals may include coughing, shortness of breath, abnormal pulse rate, and sweating. A victim of poisoning may also complain of stomach or abdominal pain, nausea, or vomiting. The fumes, I think they made him sick. Here, call 911. If you suspect poisoning, call 911 or the workplace emergency number, then the poison control number for instructions. What exactly happened? Six, seven, Do you have pain anywhere? Let's take him outside to the fresh air. Grab those towels. To care for a victim of any sudden illness, follow these general guidelines. First, care for any life-threatening conditions. If the victim is conscious, have him rest in a comfortable position. Keep the victim from getting chilled or overheated. Do not give the victim food or water. Reassure the victim. You're going to be okay. Send someone to meet EMS. Have you been sick? Are you on any medications? No, oh, but I feel terrible. Ask if the victim has any medical conditions or is taking any medication. Continue to monitor the victim and care to minimize the effects of shock. Watch for changes in consciousness and breathing. Uh, this is Lily if Hanks someone becomes suddenly ill, call 911 or the workplace emergency number if the victim is unconscious, unusually confused, or to be losing consciousness, has trouble breathing or is breathing in a strange way, has persistent chest pain or pressure, has persistent abdominal pressure or pain that will not go away, is vomiting blood, has seizures, severe headaches or slurred speech, appears to have been poisoned. Bleeding and burns are common types of workplace injuries. There are many kinds of wounds, from minor to serious. A bruise is damage to soft tissue and blood vessels, causing bleeding under the skin. An abrasion is skin that has been rubbed or scraped away. A cut may have either jagged or smooth edges. Deep cuts can damage nerves large blood vessels and other soft tissue. A puncture is a wound caused when an object, such as a nail, pierces into the skin. 
An avulsion is a cut in which a portion of skin or other soft tissue is partially or completely torn away. When violent force causes a wound, the result could be an amputation or tearing away of a body part like a finger. A crush injury could also result. Most wounds involve some kind of bleeding. Bleeding can be from capillaries, pain, or arteries. Bleeding can be internal, such as a bruise, or external. Although minor bleeding is easily stopped with light pressure and elevation, severe bleeding from an artery can be life-threatening. Stay calm. If a victim is bleeding severely, follow the emergency action steps. I need the first aid kit. And uh, call 911. Take basic precautions to reduce the risk of disease transmission during and after care. I need a gauze pad. The American Red Cross recommends you take these steps to control the bleeding. I'm going to cover the wound. Cover the wound with a sterile dressing or clean cloth and press firmly. Press firmly and elevate the wound above the heart. Only elevate the wound if you do not suspect a fracture. Sue, get some gloves on. I'm going to need your help. Hey, the ambulance is on the way. Thanks. Go meet them. Sue, I need a roller bandage. Use a roller bandage to bandage the wound. Cover the dressing completely using overlapping turns. Sorry. Secure the bandage by taping or tying off the end over the wound. I need another gauze pad. If blood soaks through the bandage, place additional dressings and bandage. And another roller bandage. Uh. If bleeding still does not stop, find the appropriate artery and squeeze the artery against the bone. Squeezing an artery against a bone slows the flow of blood beyond that point. The point where you press on the artery is called a pressure point. There are four pressure points that are commonly used to help control bleeding. The pressure points for the arms are on the inside of the upper arm. The pressure points for the legs are at the front of the leg where the hip bends. If the bleeding does not stop, keep applying pressure and care to minimize the effects of shock until advanced medical personnel arrive. An object that remains in a wound is an embedded object. Do not remove the object. The object itself may be helping to stop the flow of blood. Place dressings around the object, pressing lightly against the wound. Place several bulky dressings around the object to keep it from moving. Apply a roller bandage over the dressings and around the object. Use overlapping turns until the dressings and object are secured in place. After giving care, remove gloves properly dispose of soiled equipment and supplies, and wash hands thoroughly. I need help here! To review, ah. if a victim is bleeding ah. severely, 
Cover the wound with a dressing and press firmly. Elevate the injured area if you do not suspect a fracture. Cover the dressing with a roller bandage. If the bleeding does not stop, apply additional dressings. Use a pressure point to squeeze the artery against the bone. Continue applying pressure and care to minimize the effects of shock until advanced medical personnel arrive. Are you okay? There are different types of burns. Radiation, chemical, electrical, and thermal. Solar or radiation burns are caused by too much exposure to the sun. Oh. Chemical burns are caused when certain chemicals come into contact with the skin. Electrical burns are caused when a source of electrical current, like a power line, comes into contact with the body. Well, at the meeting, at the meeting we should talk to her and just... Thermal burns, caused by contact with extreme heat, result in damage to the skin and underlying tissue. If someone receives a severe burn, follow the emergency action steps. Check the scene for safety since the source of the burn can be a danger to you. Let's get you over to the safe. There are three degrees of severity of burns. A superficial burn, also known as a first degree burn, may only affect the surface layer of the skin. The skin is red and dry. A partial thickness burn, also known as a second degree burn, forms blisters and affects deeper layers of the skin. The blisters may be open and weak fluid, making the skin appear wet. A full thickness burn, also known as a third degree burn, the most severe burn, affects skin and soft tissue down to the bone. The skin may be brown or black, with tissues underneath appearing white. Oh, call 911. Okay, I'm going to cool this down for you a little bit. Yes, I need an ambulance. Burns can be life-threatening and can lead to shock. You must call 911 or the workplace emergency number immediately if the burn is a partial or full thickness burn. Causes the victim to have trouble breathing. Covers more than one body part is to the head, neck, hands, feet, or genitals. Affects a child or elderly person. Results from chemicals or electricity. Just relax, it's okay, I'm gonna cool this To down. care for a burn, follow these general steps. First, stop the burning. Then cool the burned area. Yeah, just sit it right there. Thanks. Can you give me a chair in here, please? With burns of any type, Take basic precautions to reduce okay, disease right. transmission during and after okay. care. <laughs> okay, you just have a seat right there. Ask, ask, relax, yes, relax. It's gonna be okay. All right, we'll get you fixed up here. Cover the burn with a dry, clean dressing to help prevent infection and give care to minimize the effects of shock. Almost done, almost done. <laughs> Darlene, are you okay? No, I spilled some stuff. It's Let's burning. flush it out. If a burn is caused by chemicals, flush the burn area with cool running water to stop and cool the burn. If a burn is caused by electricity, check for life-threatening conditions. If there are none, cover the burn. 
care to minimize the effects of shock and care for the victim until advanced medical personnel arrive. Carry that gear down there. That's okay. I got it. All right, sit yourself. It is important to recognize injuries to muscles, bones, and joints as quickly as possible. First, check the scene for safety. Then check the victim for life-threatening conditions. What happened? I tripped. You tripped? You hurt your arm? Yes. Okay, just hold it still. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back to the truck to get the first aid kit, okay. and I'm going to call for help. Okay. Keep still, okay? I'll be right back. Hey, this is Claudia. I'm a site overlook. Call 911 or your help, okay? workplace emergency number if the victim has any problem breathing. The injury is an open fracture. The victim cannot use the injured part without pain, or you suspect a head, neck, or back injury. Does it hurt anywhere else? No. I can't believe it. Always Man. take basic precautions to prevent disease transmission during and after care. It's all right. Signals of fracture may include the sound of bone obvious deformity and swelling. It is often difficult to know if a muscle, bone, or joint injury is a fracture, dislocation, sprain, or strain. To provide care, you do not need to know the type of injury the victim has. Care is the same. Hold still. I'm just going to make you a splint so I can take you to the emergency room, okay? If you have a victim, immobilize the injury area first. Splitting is used to immobilize an injury and keep the injured body part from moving. Splint an injury in the position you find it, only if the victim must be moved, and only if you can do it without causing the victim more pain or discomfort. A splint should immobilize the above and below the site of injury. Splint a joint, immobilize the bone above and below the injury. If the injury is to a bone, immobilize the joints above and below the bone. You may use another body part to immobilize the injured area. For example, an injured leg splinted to a leg, a finger to a finger, or an arm to the chest. Follow these steps when splinting. Support okay. the injured area. Check for feeling, warmth, and color. Do you feel that? Yeah. Good. Okay. Then place the sling. Okay, I'm put this right here. Bring it over. Okay. Okay, now move the other arm. Okay. Really slowly. Okay, I'm gonna throw this over your shoulder. Like that. Good. Okay. Tie the sling in place. Do not tie knots directly over the injured area. All right, how's that feel? It's okay. Good? Yeah, Now I'm going to make you a binder so we can immobilize your arm. Okay. okay. Tie a binder around the victim to further secure the injured part. Just lift your arm a little bit. Good. Okay. That'll keep it nice and still. Okay, Recheck feel. feeling, okay. warmth, and color Good. around the injury. Good. All right, let's go. Can you do that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Okay. All right, just, just lean on me right there. Okay. Care to minimize the effects of shock and continue to monitor the victim. To review, 
If you suspect a victim has a fracture, dislocation, sprain, or strain, and you must splint the injury, support the injured area. Check for feeling, warmth, and color. Place the sling. Tie the ends of the sling at the side of the neck. Bind the injured area. Recheck for feeling, warmth, and color. Care to minimize the effects of shock and continue to monitor the victim. Why they ever stored all this stuff next to the boiler rooms beyond me. I don't know what they were thinking. Anyway, I better get back out to the truck and call in. This is gonna take a lot longer than we thought. All right, I'm gonna get back to it, but this heat. I'll be back soon. A heat-related emergency can occur when the body overheats and is not able to cool effectively. Heat exhaustion is the most common type of heat emergency. Signals of heat exhaustion include moist, pale or flushed skin, headache, nausea, dizziness, weakness and exhaustion. If not cared for promptly, heat exhaustion can progress quickly to heat stroke, a life-threatening condition. Signals of heat stroke include a change in the level of consciousness, high body temperature, and red, hot skin that can be either dry or moist. The pulse may be rapid or weak, and breathing is often rapid and shallow. Check the victim. If you suspect he's suffering from heat exhaustion, provide care immediately. First, move him to a cooler environment. Just turn around. Turn around. There we go. All right. Hang on. I'll cool you down here in a minute. Here. Loosen or remove clothing. Shirt off here. Cool you right down. Try to fan the victim. Hang on. Or get him into circulating in air while applying water. All right. Cool you down here. You all right? Hang in here. Water evaporating off the skin has a cooling effect on the body. All right? Oh, yeah. All right. Take it easy. If the victim is conscious, providing small amounts of cool water to drink Take will also help. All right. I think I'm gonna get some help here. If the victim's condition does not improve, call 911 or the workplace emergency yeah, I, number. Look, I'm gonna need some help. Down Continue there. to provide uh, care and monitor order. the victim until I advanced medical it. help arrives. 2238 Woodmont Avenue. When exposed to low temperatures, wind, and humidity, anyone can suffer from frostbite or hypothermia. Frostbite occurs when body tissues freeze and swell. Hypothermia develops when the body can no longer keep itself warm and the body temperature begins to drop. Hypothermia can be life-threatening. Man, <clears throat> what a night. 
I don't remember rain being called in the forecast. Lewis is gonna be one unhappy camper. Well, he wanted to finish up. Anyway, he's probably back in the trailer by now. Prolonged exposure and wet clothing will contribute to the onset of hypothermia. Signals include shivering, slow irregular pulse, numbness, a glassy stare, apathy, and impaired judgment. As hypothermia progresses, the victim may move clumsily and in later stages may stop shivering or lose consciousness. Hey, you still out there? Yeah, see. Without proper care, a hypothermia victim's body systems will gradually fail. Pulse and breathing will slow down, and the victim could eventually die. Jeez, Lewis, let's get you back to the truck. We need to put you back in the trailer. Have a seat right here. Let's get you out of these clothes, man. To care for hypothermia, get the person out of the cold and into dry clothing as quickly as possible. It's gonna be okay, we'll take care of it. Get those blankets and sheets for me over there in the closet. Thanks. Blankets and plastic sheeting can be used to hold in okay. body heat generated through shivering. Shivering is your body's natural defense against the drop in core temperature. Give me a job, sir. It's on your head. That shiver is good, man. It means your body's getting warm, okay? Let's ship this. Warm liquids can also help raise the body temperature of the victim. Do not give the victim anything that contains caffeine or alcohol. Take care not to warm the victim too quickly. You better call 911, okay? Call 911 or the workplace emergency number if the victim's condition does not improve. I'm fine, okay? I feel better. Continue to monitor the victim and care to minimize the effects of shock if necessary. Every minute of every hour, 24 hours a day, year after year, without rest, your heart pumps blood through your body. The rhythm of a normal heart is constant. If for some reason this rhythm is changed or interrupted, the heart may no longer be able to pump blood effectively, depriving the body of oxygen and leading to death. The heart is a complex organ divided into four chambers. The upper chambers are called atria. The lower chambers are called ventricles. Blood flows from the atria to the ventricles and then to the rest of the body. The contraction of the heart muscle is triggered by an electrical system contained within the heart. In a healthy heart, the electrical impulse comes from a point near the top of the heart called the sinoatrial, or SA node. The impulse travels down to the atrioventricular, or AV node, near the bottom of the right atrium. From the AV node, the impulse spreads across the ventricles, causing the muscles to contract and force blood out of the heart. The electrical activity of the heart and its rhythm can be measured by a heart monitor that displays an electrocardiogram, or ECG. The peaks and valleys of each wave, their size, shape, and frequency, show the heart's rhythm and how the electrical system is functioning. This ECG shows regular electrical activity called normal sinus rhythm. When a person has a cardiac emergency, becomes unconscious, has no pulse, and is not breathing, this does not necessarily mean the heart has stopped altogether. The heart's electrical system may still 
still function, but abnormally. The heart is unable to pump blood through the body effectively, resulting in a life-threatening condition. One of these life-threatening conditions occurs when the heart beats too fast. This rhythm is called ventricular tachycardia, or VTAC. In VTAC, an abnormal electrical impulse controls the heart, originating in the ventricles instead of the SA node. This abnormal impulse fires so fast that the heart's chambers do not have time to fill. With little or no blood circulating, there may be no pulse. When there is no pulse, one way to halt VTAC and restore normal electrical activity is with an electrical shock known as defibrillation. The shock stops the heart for an instant and allows it to reset. When effective, this shock restores normal electrical activity in the heart. If a life-threatening abnormal heart rhythm is not corrected, all electrical activity in the heart will eventually stop. No electrical activity in the heart is a condition called asystole. Defibrillation will not correct asystole. Even though there is no electrical activity in the heart, you should still perform CPR. Another life-threatening heart condition is ventricular fibrillation, or V-fib. In V-fib, the heart simply quivers without any organized rhythm. The electrical impulses fire at random, creating chaos. The heart is unable to circulate blood, therefore, there is no pulse. Defibrillation is the best way to stop V-fib, and it allows the heart to reset and return to a normal heart rhythm. There are a variety of AEDs in use today. Attachment of the defibrillation pads before use varies with each model. On some, the pads and cables are pre-connected, but must be attached to the machine. On other models, the pads and cables are pre-connected and are attached to the machine. On some models, the cables are pre-connected to the machine, but the pads must be attached to the cables. The placement instructions on the pads vary depending on the AED. Pads can be color-coded to indicate which pad goes where on the chest. Some pads are not marked, but the cables are color-coded. Others have illustrations indicating placement on the chest. To turn the machine on, some AEDs have a power switch. Others are activated when opening the unit. Place electrodes. To analyze a victim's heart rhythm, some AEDs tell you what to do. Push analyze. Others analyze the victim's rhythm without a prompt. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. Deliver shock now. All AEDs have a button the operator must press to deliver the shock. Because all AEDs are different, Follow the manufacturer's instructions and local protocols to use the unit correctly. Before using an AED, confirm the absence of a pulse. Check signs of circulation, which includes a pulse, for no more than 10 seconds. If there are no signs of circulation, prepare the AED for use. Remove the pads from their packaging and apply them to the victim's bare, dry chest. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. Place one pad on the victim's upper right chest and the other pad on the victim's lower left side. Stand clear and make sure not to move or touch the victim. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Then, let the AED analyze the rhythm. The AED will indicate shock advised, shock advised. if a shock is needed. Charging. 
stay clear of patients. Make sure no one is touching deliver the victim and deliver the shock Press when prompted. Press the orange button now. Shock delivered. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. Shock delivered. If the AED Analyzing indicates that a shock is not necessary, not touch the this means that it does not detect a shockable rhythm. No shock advised. Recheck the it victim's pulse for no more than 10 seconds. Check pulse. If there is still no pulse, perform CPR for one minute. Then, let the AED reanalyze the rhythm. Make sure you are clear. If prompted, deliver another shock. If no shock is advised, check the pulse. Care for the conditions you find. To review, to use an AED, confirm the absence of a pulse. Check signs of circulation for no more than 10 seconds. Turn on the AED and prepare it for use.